Hello, this is NanoDano at devdungeon.com, and we're going to walk through the process of creating a Discord bot in JavaScript with Node.js. There's a written tutorial on DevDungeon if you prefer the blog post format. Check the description for a link. We're going to start at the very beginning with how to register with Discord and create your own server, all the way through creating custom commands, adding emoji reactions to messages, and more. Also check out some of the other tutorials for Discord that are available, including how to write Discord bots in Python. If you aren't already familiar with Discord, it is a great text and voice chat platform that's free to use. They have a web, mobile, and a desktop app. It has a lot of nice features for gamers in particular. DevDungeon has a Discord server you can join to chat about programming and security related topics. Here's a link, and you can also find it in the video description and from the Dev Dungeon homepage. The first thing you'll need to do is register and then log in to Discord. Go to https colon slash slash discordapp.com slash channels slash at me. Once you're logged in, the next step is to create a server for you to test with. Look on the left side for the server list and click the plus sign. Then click create a server. You will need to fill out a name at a minimum. You can also provide an image and change the region if desired. I recommend picking the region closest to you for faster server responses. After your server is created, it should show up in the left side in your server list. Click on the server. You should see a general channel, and on the member list to the right, you should see your user. Now that you have your very own server to mess around with, you will need to register an app with Discord. Go to the Discord developer portal at discordapp.com slash developers, and then click on create an application. Fill out the name of your application. By default, it's named my application, but you should give it a custom name. Then click on the bot section in the left and choose add bot. Change the bot's name if you want to. Then under the token section of the bot page, click on click to reveal and save this token. This is essentially your bot's username and password combined into one string. So it's important to keep this a secret and don't share it with anybody you don't want to control your bot. I'm showing mine for this tutorial only, but I will be deleting it afterwards so nobody can use it. Later, you will use this token in the source code, so save it. Now that you have a server, an app, and a bot user, there's one more step we have to do with Discord. Your bot can be invited to many servers, but right now it doesn't belong to any server, so we'll need to invite the bot to your server. Click on the OAuth2 section on the left side of the page, and then scroll down slightly to the Scopes section. Check the bot scope, and it will generate a URL. Copy that URL and paste it into your web browser. Once on the page, you'll be asked which server you want to invite the bot to. Choose the server that you created and click Authorize. Once you see the Authorized Success screen, your bot has successfully joined your server. You should now see the bot in the member list as an offline user. The same URL that you used to authorize the bot can be shared with others if you want them to invite your bot to their server. They will be able to interact with your bot but not control your bot. Now we're done with all the prep work needed on the Discord side. Fortunately, you only have to do all of this one time. Once the bot is created and invited to the server, it will stay there. You won't have to do this again. Now we can move on to writing the JavaScript code. Before we can do that though, you need to make sure you have Node.js installed on your system. Open your system terminal and run node-version. If you get a response and it says 8.0 or higher, you're already good to go. But if you get a message like unrecognized program or some kind of error, you most likely need to go download and install Node.js. Get it from nodejs.org. After you have installed Node.js, you should be able to run node-version in your terminal, and it should look something like this. Next, I'm going to open Visual Studio Code, a free editor that works well with JavaScript. You can use any editor you want though, but this is the one I'm going to use for the tutorial, and I recommend you use it to follow along as well, unless you already have a preferred editor. 
go to File, Open Folder. I recommend creating a new directory to store your project. I'm going to create a new directory on my desktop called MyBot. Then I'm going to choose to open that folder. Once the folder is open, you can hover your mouse over the folder name in the left sidebar and click on the new file icon. Give the file name like mybot.js. The next thing we need to do is install the discord.js module using npm. Go to view terminal and a terminal will open up in the bottom portion of your editor window. It should automatically put you in the directory that you opened and you're working in. In the terminal, run npm install discord.js. You might see some warnings, and that's okay. There shouldn't be any errors, though. At the time of this video, version 11 is the latest discord.js version. Future versions may change and break some of these examples, so if that happens, check out the video description and the comments to see if there's any updates. Okay, now we finally have all the setup work out of the way. We can actually start coding. Congratulations if you've made it this far. You've got most of the legwork out of the way. Let's go back to our file that we created. Let's write a very simple bot program just to make sure everything is installed properly and the bot user is working correctly. We will load the Discord module and then connect. That's all it's going to do. When the bot successfully connects, we will have it print out a message to the console indicating that it did connect. In the file, write const discord equals require discord.js. And on the next line, write const client equals new discord.client. Then let's add some code that will get triggered after the bot has successfully connected. Write the following code client dot on ready parentheses arrow console dot log connected as plus client dot user dot tag then finally one more line where we call client dot login pass your bots secret token as the parameter to login if you need to get your bots token again Go to discordapp.com slash developers. Click on your application and then go to the bot section and click to reveal the token. Pass the token as a string to the client.login function. Let's test this now by executing the program in the terminal using node mybot.js. We should see a message printed out to our console to indicate success. And if we look at our server, the bot user should appear online. If you see the message in your console and the bot appears online, then congrats. Everything is installed correctly and your bot is configured properly. The hardest parts are all out of the way now. Now we're going to focus on making your bot do fun things. If you happen to get an error message, read the message carefully and see if you can figure out why it failed. If you get stuck, join the Dev Dungeon Discord server or leave a comment here. Also check the comments to see if your question is already answered. To terminate the program, press Control C. This will end the program and return you to the command prompt. After you terminate the program, your bot will appear online for a few minutes before it goes back offline. That's normal. Let's modify the code so after the bot connects, we have it update its status to say that it's playing a game. Near the bottom of the onReady event, write client.user.setActivity and pass it a string that says with JavaScript. This will change the bot's status to say playing with JavaScript. Let's run it and verify it works. It looks like the bot's status did update. Good. You can change the verb from playing to streaming, listening, or watching. Let's change it to say watching YouTube instead of playing with JavaScript. Let's remove the line we currently have and replace it with client.user.setActivity YouTube and as a second parameter we're going to pass it type watching. Let's run it again and make sure it works as expected. Perfect. Now let's extend the bot a little further 
to print out the list of all the servers that it's connected to. Right now it's probably only connected to your one server, but it's possible that the bot belongs to many servers at once. Inside the ready event, let's add a few lines of code. Write client.guilds.foreach guild arrow console.log guild.name. Let's run it and verify it works. We should see our test server listed at a minimum. Let's take it a little further, and for each server, let's have it print out all of the available channels. Inside that for each loop that we already created, write guild.channels.for each channel arrow console.log channel name channel type channel ID. Let's run it again and view the output. We should see a list of channels for each server listed. Notice that there are multiple types of channels, including text, voice, and category. Let's look for a text channel. There's one called general. Take note of the ID. We're going to need this for later in the next steps. You can add it as a comment to the existing code so you don't lose it. Each channel and channel ID is unique per server so you cannot use this exact ID that I'm using in my example. You'll have to use the ID that you got from your own program on your server. Why don't we have the bot send a message to the general channel that we just identified in the previous step whenever it connects? We'll make it say, hello world. At the bottom of the onready event block, write let general channel equals client.channels.get and pass it the ID of your channel as a string. On the next line, write general channel dot send hello world. Let's run the program again and make sure it works. Verify it sends a hello world message after it connects. Next, let's demonstrate how to attach a file or an image to a message you send. It's very similar to sending a message, except instead of passing a string, we're going to pass an attachment object. We can create an attachment by writing const attachment equals new discord dot attachment. We need to pass either a file name or a web URL to a file. This works the same for files and images. You can pass it a local file path to something on your hard disk or an internet address. I'm going to provide a URL to the Dev Dungeon logo. You can use this same URL since it is publicly accessible. Now, on the line where we call generalchannel.send, let's replace the string of hello world with the attachment object we just created. Let's run the code and see what happens. As expected, it posted the image to the channel. Okay, so now we have seen how to get a list of servers, get a list of channels, send a message, send an image, update the bot status, but what if we want to respond to an incoming message from someone else? So far, we've been triggering all of our code based off of the ready event, which is triggered after the bot connects and is ready to perform actions. We're going to start using a different event now, one that is triggered every time a message is sent that is the message event. Below the entire client ready event, let's write client.on message, received message, arrow, open and close bracket. Right now we'll leave it empty, so let's fill out the logic that we want to happen whenever a message is received. The message event is triggered on every single message. That means even messages that the bot sends out will trigger this event. This could potentially send the bot into an infinite loop where it continues responding to its own messages forever. To avoid this, let's add a check to see if the message author is the bot itself. If it is, we will just ignore it and return and execute the function so it doesn't do anything. Do this by writing if received message dot author equals equals client dot user, then return. If the message was sent by someone else other than the bot, 
the code will continue past these lines. So after this if statement, let's have the bot reply. Write received message dot channel dot send message received plus received message dot content. This will have the bot respond in the same channel and echo back the message that it got as acknowledgement. This could be a public channel or a private message. It'll work correctly for both. Why don't we make the response a little more personalized? Let's have the bot tag the user who sent the message. To do this, we just need to reference the received message dot author and convert it to a string. Update the sent message to include received message dot author dot to string like this. Let's run it again and make sure that it works. Good. It looks like it tags the user who sent the message. While we're at it, why don't we have the bot add an emoji reaction to the user's message? Inside the onMessage event, let's have the bot add a reaction. Some servers have custom emojis that you can use, while others only have the default set. Believe it or not, there is actually an international standard for emojis. You can check out all of the Unicode emojis at this link. It's also in the video description. To add a reaction, we will write received message dot react and pass it the emoji string. You can actually copy and paste the emoji itself into the source code. A Unicode emoji is recognized as a character, just like a P or a Q. However, Discord does not support every single Unicode emoji, so you'll have to try it out and make sure the one that you want works. For this example, we'll use the thumbs up, which is known to work. You can also use custom emojis on your server. To add custom emojis to a server, go to Server Settings, Emoji, Upload Emoji. I will upload a sample one now to demonstrate. To use a custom emoji as a reaction, you will need to know the unique ID of the custom emoji. We don't know what that ID is yet as I just uploaded it. So why don't we just get every custom emoji from the server, print out its ID, and react with it. So add the code receivedMessage.guild.emojis.foreach custom emoji arrow console.log custom emoji name, custom emoji ID. And then on the next line, received message dot react, custom emoji. This will go through each custom emoji available on the server and react with it as well as print out the ID. Let's run it once to see how it works. Notice how it reacted with our custom emoji in the server, and in the console it printed out the ID. Now that we know the ID, we can just react with that one specific emoji instead of loading all of them. Let's get rid of the for each and replace it with let custom emoji equals received message dot guild dot emojis dot get and then the ID. On the next line, add received message dot react custom emoji. Let's run it and send a message again just to make sure it works. At this point, you should feel a little more comfortable with your bot and have enough building blocks to build a more complicated bot. I want to cover one last topic though, which is how to create a command. A command in this sense is just a regular message that starts with a special character like an exclamation point that triggers an action by the bot. There are many ways you can implement this. You could check the entire message to see if it contains the full command, or you could make the command take a variable number of parameters. I'm going to walk through one way to create it that demonstrates making two commands, a help command and a multiply command. With these examples, you should have a good template for extending and creating more of your own custom commands. First, let's start inside the onMessage event block, since the command will be a message. 
Let's inspect the first character of the message and see if it equals the exclamation mark. If it does, let's pass the logic off to a function called process command, and let's pass it the received message as the argument. Next, we'll need to create the process command function. It takes the received message as a parameter. We already know it starts with an exclamation point, so let's remove that character from the beginning of the string with let full command equals received message dot content dot substr one. This will remove the first character. Next, let's take the remaining string and split it into pieces based off of each space character. Let split command equals full command dot split and pass it a space. This will return an array containing each word. We want to treat the first word provided as the name of the command. We'll call that the primary command. So write let primary command equals split command bracket zero. If there are any remaining words in the array, we want to store them as the arguments. Let arguments equal split command dot slice one. This will exclude the first element and keep all of the rest of them if there are any. So now we have one variable containing the primary command and another variable containing the array of all the arguments, if there are any. Now we can inspect the primary command variable to see what command was triggered. Since we want to make a help command, let's check and see if the primary command equals the string help. We'll use an if statement. If it does equal help, let's hand off logic to a function named help command and pass it the arguments along with the original message that was received. Next, we'll have to create the help command function. Let's do that now. Function, help command, and pass it arguments, received message. Inside the help command, we can inspect the argument list to see if any arguments were provided. Let's first check to see if the length is zero, meaning no parameters were provided. If arguments dot length equals equals zero, then received message dot channel dot send. I'm not sure what you need help with. Try exclamation help topic. If the user didn't provide any arguments, we'll let them know by responding with that message. Let's also add an else statement to handle the case when arguments are passed. In this case, we'll just respond saying, it looks like you need help with plus arguments. Let's run this and try it out now. Try typing exclamation help and then exclamation help JavaScript and review the responses from the bot. Let's add a second command so you get the idea of how to add more commands. Back in the process command function, let's add an else if statement to check for another command named multiply. If it is, let's hand off logic to a function named multiply command. Let's also add an else statement to catch any unknown commands and suggest some possible commands to the user. Next, we need to create the multiply command function. Function, multiply command, arguments, received message. The first thing we should do is check the arguments. We will need at minimum two values to multiply together. Let's write an if statement to check if the arguments is less than two. If it is less than two, let's send a message back to the user and then exit the function. If there are at least two arguments, then the code will continue past this if statement. Let's calculate the product then. Let product equals one to start. Then arguments dot for each value arrow product equals product times parse float value. Now that we have the multiplication product, we can return the answer to the user with received message dot channel dot send the product of 
arguments is product.toString. Now let's test out the multiply command. Restart the bot and send exclamation multiply by itself. And then try exclamation multiply 2.5, 10, and 10. And it should return a result. Try adding your own custom command to the bot. If you don't have any ideas, try a simple one where if you write exclamation ping, the bot will respond with Pong. If you need some other ideas for custom commands, how about an exclamation fortune command that will return a random fortune cookie quote? Or how about exclamation Bitcoin that will look up the Bitcoin price using an API and return the price to the user? Or how about exclamation weather? that takes the zip code as an argument and returns the local weather. That's all the code we're going to cover in this tutorial. You're on your own now. You should be able to take these building blocks and build better, more complex bots. One common question is, how do I run the bot 24-7 all the time? To keep a bot running all the time, you'll need to leave the program running all the time. You can do this by simply leaving your computer on all the time and never turning it off. This is not practical for most people though. An alternative is to rent a cheap $5 a month server from a provider like Linode or DigitalOcean. They provide cheap Linux servers that run all the time in their data center, the cloud as you call it. You can run your code there. Another alternative is to use something like a Raspberry Pi from your house and leave that running all the time. If you have any questions, feel free to join the Dev Dungeon Discord server and ask questions. You can also check the comments here and leave comments here. Also make sure you bookmark the Discord.js official documentation at discord.js.org. That's going to be the best, most definitive source for this library. Check out other Dev Dungeon tutorials on the YouTube channel and on devdungeon.com. There are several other Discord tutorials, including how to write a Discord bot in Python. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to the channel.